Well, you know, the Lord saved me 30 years ago. I was born into a fourth generation LDS home, a loving fourth generation LDS home. My mother grew up in Provo, Utah. I grew up celebrating Pioneer Day. I grew up uh, singing the golden plates were hidden deep in the mountainside. I sang songs uh, that Jesus wants before a sunbeam. I was in Cub Scouts. I remember having a chart that said, how do I measure up? I remember my CTR box. Uh, so as a young boy, you know, from the time I was baptized, I was baptized three times into the LDS church. The first time, and this is, I don't want to make light of this in a humorous, joking, kind of mocking way. I just want to share with you my experience. The, uh, my head was, was out of the water a bit and on the first time. The second time, my toe was out of the water a little bit. The third time, my whole body went under the water. It's just because of the teaching that your whole body literally has to be submerged under the water. And so I felt so good, I can tell you that. When I was baptized, all my sins from eight years old back, I was, I was forgiven, I was cleansed, and it felt great. But now it was going forward where I had to prove myself to Heavenly Father that I was good enough to return back with him. My parents were never sealed in the temple, and so I was nervous. I would go home after the ward, and I would go into the bathroom, and I remember just crying, you know, because my mom and dad weren't quite worthy enough. My dad even, you know, he baptized me, but it was my uncle who confirmed me into the LDS church. And so, as I grew up, I would ask questions. And I can remember one time in Sunday school when the teacher said, Rusty, stop asking so many questions. And that just really stuck in my mind. Um, I was trying to be respectful, but I had questions. Um, so as I grew, I, I, I thought, well, you know, 14 years old now, Joseph Smith was 14, I still have a lot of questions. So wouldn't it be kind of great if I could go back into the woods, back behind my house in Santa Rosa, California, and kneel down and look up into the sky and just like the pictures I had seen and movies I had watched, hey, Heavenly Father will come down and Jesus will come down and just talk with me. I mean, I just wanted that closeness. I wanted to know that he loved me, that I was accepted by him. So I did that. It was the summer of 1979. And I knelt down next to the creek bed, if you can just imagine it, with the trees all just, you know, the sun shining through the trees. And I knelt down and I literally did this. I, and I knelt there for probably about 15 minutes waiting for something and nothing ever happened. Now, around that same time though, my brother and I, we were mowing lawns for people in the neighborhood and a neighbor down the street, Madeline Grinstead, said, hey, yeah, you guys ought to come visit our church. And I thought, oh, you know, I don't know about that. Um, but we went to Santa Rosa Bible Church on a Sunday morning. So somehow she got a hold of mom and, and dad and we were just gonna go visit this little church. And so there's this pastor and he's sharing about the simplicity of putting your faith alone in Christ, that he died on the cross for, you, for me, and that similar as to a gift like a Christmas, I could know that I had all my sins forgiven, past, present, and future, if I just simply received this, this amazing gift for myself, and I could have peace with God. When I heard that, I thought, this man was completely nuts. I thought, this guy has missed it so much, man. He, he has missed the golden plates, Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, uh, so many things. He was just talking about Jesus, who I was taught was just my elder brother. And, and of course, I, I had some admiration for Jesus, but, but I didn't have this peace. I didn't have a relationship with him. I didn't have a relationship with God. And so we left that church service to come back again with the same message, I thought surely they would have fired that pastor because of all the things he was talking about that morning. But um, there's the same enthusiasm, same uh, sincerity, same clarity of this simple message. And I listened with my brother sitting next to me. And as the invitation was given to trust Christ as my personal savior, I just, I just thought, I've got to do this. I've, I've never been... This has never been told to me before. You know, I've, I've heard it in little kind of bite-sized, like, have faith in Christ. But, but then all this, plus all these other things, you know, and, and the temple and all these things. And I just thought, wow, this is what I want. This is, this is the relationship. This is the type of forgiveness that I'm looking for. And so 
as I started to raise my hand, you can imagine if you, if you tried to raise your hand like in a, in a kind of setting like this, you, your, your elbow might rub up against somebody else's arm. And so my brother was sitting next to me and I started lifting my hand up. My brother said, what are you doing? He could tell why I was doing this. So I very gently told him to shut up. <laughs> That's what I did. I told him, I said, shut up, Steve. Shh. So I rose my hand. And that was my, my way of telling that pastor up front that I wanted to put my complete faith and trust and rely upon Jesus Christ, that he took all my sin, past, present, and future, on him. And all I had to do was to accept that. And now that I've become a child of God because of that, not to try to earn anything, but now I could live for him. Now that I, now that I had this relationship, I could, do, I could show my appreciation. I could show my love for him. And I never had to worry, again, about not being good enough to where someday I wouldn't have to worry about the telestial, terrestrial, or celestial, but I had a place secured, like it talks about in Peter, that's reserved in heaven for me. It fades not away. So that's, that, that's in a nutshell, my testimony. As the years went by, I, I've, I went on mission trips to Utah and just enjoyed them so much. I just enjoyed the car washes, the, the, the letters, the support letters, getting ready for the trip, the long road trip from Northern California out here to, to Utah. And then when I was 19, I came out to Utah for a month and did a little work with Ira Ransom and a pastor, Steve Barsoon, and I was a camp counselor up at Camp Utaba. And I'm telling you what, I was 19 years old and I just fell in love with Utah. I just felt like this is, this is what God wants for me. Going back to just, just kind of bringing you up to speed as to where God led me. He brought the right girl into my life. He, he, he gave me my wife, Tammy. Uh, we've been married for 19 years. And we moved to Utah in 1994. That's when Allie, our 16-year-old, where's Allie? Right there, right there. We, we came to Utah when Allie was just a tiny little baby. And so we've been living, and we have uh, Caitlin, who's 13, and Jack, who's six years old. And so we have been trying to serve the Lord here in Utah for the last 16 years. And the Lord has opened up the, the door for us to, um, to, to do what we could call a short-term mission ministry. And so over the last 10 years, the Lord has allowed us to, to work with interns like Aaron. He, he was our third intern back like eight years ago or something like that. And I got to go out to Ohio, and I stayed at his house, and I met Stacy when they were um, hadn't been they weren't engaged yet, but they were boyfriend girlfriend, you know. And it's just been great to see how God has worked in their lives, and so so here they are in Utah now. Yes, they are. So, um, uh, let's see here. So so as time went on, um, we've, Lord, we've seen about 170 mission teams now come to Utah from around the country, from Alaska and New York and and uh, Colorado and, and all, all across the country. And the Lord has blessed us with interns from even places like uh, North Ireland and Japan and Africa and Australia, one, one from each of those countries, not like throngs, you know, but, but ones from the states here. And, and so it, life is exciting. Let me tell you what, when Jesus said, um, yeah, I, came that you might have li- I came that you might have life and life more abundantly, yeah, he, he, he fulfilled that promise, you know? <laughs> and uh, he'll give you the desires of your heart. He's done that too. Um, so, wow, what a great time to be with you guys. When, when, I, when we're singing in here, I just, I feel so, like, connected with you guys. So, so thank you, for, again, for being here. Then most recently, as we were continuing doing, doing the mission trips, um, the Lord opened the door to start AM820. It's a Christian radio station, and you can hear it right here in Manti. And if, you're going to hear Bible teachers. You're going to hear Bible-centered talk shows, and I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited that Andy Poland's show, which is called Out of Mormonism, and it's a show about people that are following Christ. They want to follow the one true God, and their background is LDS. So imagine if you were LDS living in Utah, and then you started to be challenged by various things, and then you, you wanted to become a born-again Christian. Imagine how difficult it would be, but imagine how much p- uh, comfort you could have, in a sense, by hearing somebody else's story by flipping on the radio. And so praise God, ever since the broadcast started in January, um, Andy's told me that they've received a number of people downloading these stories from the internet. So I'm thankful for that. Um, like I said, life is full, life is good, so praise God. 